ex-Arsenal, Manchester City, Real Madrid and Tottenham forward Emmanuel Adebayo. We have to put out the major clubs that he has played for because it just shows that he has played for big clubs. He has faced online backlash from football fans after he said that he will not make any donations towards Togo's fight against coronavirus. Now the backlash comes after his fellow African footballers including Victor Wanyama and Samuel Leto uh, stepped up to help their countries fight against COVID-19. 36-year-old is uh, currently stuck in quarantine in ben Bene over the coronavirus pandemic, and according to his uh, Paraguayan club, Olympia. As per celebrity net worth, Emmanuel Adebayo has a net worth of $45 million. Adebayo is not apologetic about, about his statement, saying he will do with his money what he chooses to do, adding that he did not bring the virus to <laughs> Togo. What do you make of this? I mean, that statement is absolutely ridiculous mm. and actually very, very insensitive. Mm -hmm. At this point in time, we've seen the way athletes have come out to show support and to try and make sure that they're also aiding with the fight against the pandemic. Yeah. And for him being a top-class athlete with so much wealth of experience, having represented some of the biggest clubs in Europe, he should know better and he should be doing better. Mm. Um, if he was still representing some of the top clubs in Europe, de he's definitely getting a sanction yeah. and he will be made to apologize for what he just said. But mm. they Less. First of all, as a human being, why would you even say something like that? <laughs> um, his country, Togo, he's just lucky that the pandemic is not, the outburst is not as much in other countries mm. like the way it is in Togo. So, but he should be doing better. He should actually yeah. contribute to what the government is doing, mm -hmm. especially in his immediate community, in his immediate society. So, mm -hmm. very disappointing to hear that from him. He should know better and he mm. should do better. All right, he should know better and he should do better. Joining us this morning is Andrew Randa, media officer at Nigeria on the 20 national team, talking about the Flying Eagles. Good to have you with us, Andrew. Uh, good morning, Nigeria. Good morning, Yoka. Imano, yeah. um, there's, there's a whole lot to his story, but we'll get to that. Hmm. All right, let's talk about um, Emmanuel Adebayo. You heard his comment. He said he did not bring coronavirus to Togo. Therefore, he will not get to contribute to the fight against the pandemic. What do you make of this? Do you think he said something good or it was inhuman of him? I wouldn't say inhuman. Um, he wouldn't say good at the same time. If you've known what is not true in Togo, and then, for example, you won't be surprised what he has said. He's been a very controversial figure for a very long time. And some of us are aware of what happened him with his family, um, you know, reported he was, they almost killed him at the point. Um, he's having problems with his family for more than 11, 12 years now. Um, at the point, he said he was going to go back to Togo because he felt they were going to kill him. And then he said they did a lot of fetish things against him. So he's always been on his own for a very, very long time. In fact, at the point, he decided not to have anything to do with Togo and his family. So his utterances are not out of place. I mean, if he had said something different, I would be surprised. Uh, you know, so Adebayo is always Adebayo. Um, I wasn't surprised when I heard him say those things. But again, um, at this particular time that we are in the world, I do not think that is the right thing to say. He probably would have said no comment, or I've just said he will do what he can, you know, based on his own convictions. But going all the way to say things like he didn't bring uh, the COVID-19 virus to Togo, that's absolutely ridiculous. And it's hilarious at the same time, but I think he should do better. But mm -hmm. at the other end, I'm not surprised he said this. Yeah, because he, 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 I don't think he should be bringing family issues to this fight against the pandemic. Remember, I remember one time he said his mother was into witchcraft and, and, and all that. His family members were all out to get him and that they, they didn't want his career to flourish. I mean, Emmanuel Adibay has played for top sides in England and, of course, uh, in Spain as well. And I think he has enough money to at least donate one or two things. So coming out in the, uh, to the public to make those kind of statements isn't so professional from him. But, but do you think he'll be getting a sanction from his club, Olympia? Uh, no, I, I don't think so. This is a personal thing. Um, you know, Adebayo has been really frustrated by things that have happened to him. So that spillover of the issues he has had with his family and with Togolese people has spilled over into the COVID-19 thing. And at the same time, Doka, uh, we cannot tell people what to do with their money, you know, at the end of the day. Um, that sense of entitlement that we have as, as a people is one of the things that usually make a lot of players not want to come back and invest in certain ways because, you know, we just feel like they should. But Adebayo has said it's his money. He worked hard for it. He will spend it the way he wants. And basically, I think what he's trying to say in essence is 
uh, people cannot dictate to him what to do or what not to do. I think that's the main stance, in my own opinion, anyway. Uh, but that being said, like I earlier, I earlier uh, iterated, um, you know, at this particular point uh, in time that we are in the world, it's a very sensitive time. People are dying and all that. And, you know, he will have been able to put his words in a much proper context, in a much uh, matured manner, so that he can pass his point across. Um, that is not to say he has not done anything. Um, I'm very aware that he has done a few things for people around his... He's got a big uh, mansion. Uh, I've forgotten the name of the place in Togo, and he's done a lot. He's built, built a clinic for them. So I think this is just frustration on his own part, and, but he didn't really uh, put it well. Mm. All right, let's go on to the next story. It's about Argentina. They've declared its football season over on Monday, and they said there will be no relegation for two seasons because of the disruption caused by the new coronavirus outbreak. Now, the idea is to restart play, but when authorities allow it and with maximum security. And the decision means the Copa Superliga, a 24-team tournament scheduled to end in a playoff in May, has also been cancelled. Only one round of those games have been had, had taken place when the lockdown began. Now, do you think, because in Holland, I'm, I'm hearing some of the clubs actually um, going against the decision to cancel the league season, but do you think that they should apply in other leagues as well, the likes of Spain, Italy, um, uh, in England and France as well? Um, you know, it, every league has its own peculiarities. So, um, like the Premier League have said, they're committed to finishing the league on the pitch. The LMC here in Nigeria are also committed to finishing the league on the pitch. Other countries like Belgium, um, like you rightly mentioned, Argentina, and a few others have decided that enough is enough. Um, they do not think they're going to risk the lives of players to take them back to the pitch or even fans to get into the stadiums. Um, so it's, it's a little bit dire. And for me, I think the most important thing is for people to be able to sit down and say, listen, is it worth it at all? Uh, are we willing to take the risk? Um, I'll use the Bundesliga as a case study. Um, if they do not finish their games, it means they're going to play, I mean, pay a hefty amount back to the TV broadcasters, which is basically saying um, they're going to lose almost half the value that the, the Bundesliga has. And it's also definitely going to affect the DFB, which is the, uh, the, Dutch, uh, the, the German Football Federation. So there's a whole lot that goes into these things, not just the mechanics of you know, going to watch games. You also have to look at finances. Uh, for Argentina themselves, I don't know how their sponsorship package is, uh, but I think it's a little bit okay since they can even go, uh, you know, no relegation, no no promotion next two seasons. It means they have uh, they wouldn't have those kind of TV right problems. But for the French league, uh, for the Bundesliga and the uh, Premier League, those big uh, top five or top ten leagues in the world, mm. they're definitely going to have money issues if they don't show these games um, on TV, and it might affect revenues that might be. Uh, have dire consequences for maybe five to ten years. So I think for those kind of leagues, those are the things they are trying to avoid. Yeah. Other leagues can decide to say, um, you know, the TV money is not really that big. Uh, we can manage to break through or even break even um, so we can afford to suspend the league. Uh, so it's going to be very, very difficult for, for many countries. But, you know, to be honest with you, I do see this thing happening every other day. We're going to see leagues uh, suspending their, or, or cancelling rather, their, their leagues over the next few weeks. Yeah. Some might decide to be a little bit uh, stop, stop on, if I may use the word, and find a way of concluding their league, while others will decide to say, listen, uh, enough is enough. Um, uh, I mean, our life matters much more than football, so we're going to cancel the season, and we'll wait till June or July. If, if this COVID-19 thing subsides, then we start a new season. Some might decide to play everything out on the pitch, and a lot, I think a lot, will decide, okay, look, it's enough. Uh, we've lost a lot already. Let's just cancel the league and everybody starts. Um, I don't know if there's going to be litigations uh, from clubs. I know a lot of clubs in Holland are not happy. Our own serial Dessas, who is the joint top scorer in Holland, is not happy uh -huh. uh, because his goals basically have been cancelled. It means it never existed. So there's a whole lot going into it, but I do expect that a whole lot of leagues are going to cancel uh, their season. Wow. Thank you very much, Andrew, for speaking with us.